I really don't tend to talk about current events unless I really do have something to say about the subject. And since I'm ignorant on most subjects, it doesn't happen very often. However, this one kind of struck a chord with me, and that's the whole Sears bankruptcy thing. Now, I've already done a video on this beautiful, beautiful thing right here. No, not the girl, the magazine, the, the, the magazine, the booklet, the book, the, the catalog, I guess catalog would best describe it. These things were full of video games, they were full of toys, and we would take these catalogs and we would circle the things that we would want and then our moms would say, yeah, I'm getting that for you for Christmas or F off. Or, or whatever, but these things were just a huge part of my childhood growing up, you know, before the internet and before Nintendo Power. And of course, I will link the video uh, either at the end of this one or hell, right here, maybe even a little card right here if you want to go check it out. And it actually didn't get a lot of views, uh, so I guess not a lot of people are interested in it, just like a lot of people are probably not going to be interested in this video, but I still want to talk about it because I find it kind of interesting, kind of. I want to kind of briefly talk about what's actually going on. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I have a business major and explain to you exactly verbatim what is going on but what I do know is that Sears has pretty much been run into the ground by hedge funds investors and well just they can't compete with things like Amazon now as it stands right now it's bankruptcy and they are closing some stores but it's not to the point where uh, Toys R Us was where they shut down everything liquidate everything they're not there yet but it could very very well be so as of right now it's just a lot of store closures. Now with that boring ass stuff out of the way, let's talk about video games. Let's talk about the things that I actually remember about Sears. And one of my very first memories when it comes to Sears. Now I'm not gonna get here and get all sentimental about it, you know, like I did Toys R Us because Toys R Us, oh man, that, that hit me hard right here. Sears is kind of like, you know, ah, it, I don't really sit, I'm not gonna sit here and cry about it or anything like that, but I do have some memories with it. Uh, first thing that I do actually remember vividly is the Atari generation, the, the Atari 2600. Now, my grandparents actually, that's where we had the Atari. Basically why they got the Atari was the fact that my uncle, um, who was in high school at the time, who was really good at basketball, he was a good basketball player, um, he wiped out his knee, destroyed it, and so he was just, absolutely devastated and they ended up getting him the Atari and basketball to kind of cheer him up so he could play basketball in front of the TV. Now I'm not completely sure if they got the uh, Atari at Sears. It's very possible because my my grandfather was heavy on Sears. My, he loved going to Sears so I would place a very hefty bet that that's where they got it but I'm not 100% I'm not 100 sure. Oh, there's noise outside, sorry. But as far as what I do remember uh, in terms of Sears and Atari is that we were at the store and we went downstairs and I think it was divided in the top section was closed and then the bottom section was more of like electronics and tools and stuff like that. So we go downstairs and I, I don't know why this memory sticks out in my head and I, I don't know what it is about this memory that I remember and all the other ones that I've probably forgotten over the years, but we go down the stairs, make a left, and up next to the wall where the escalator was, uh, there was a little display set up with an Atari, a television, and a game that was being played. And this particular game, I remember thinking how awesome it looked because you know, we didn't have it. And, and, and I'm sitting there looking at it and it's this guy who's running across the screen. It's very vivid with the bright greens and blue colors. Vivid as, as you can get on a you know 1980s CRT television. Uh, but he's jumping over pits and swinging on vines and it's pitfall and i'm thinking that this is one of the coolest looking games i've ever seen in my life i was with my grandmother and my mother and i said can we get this and the answer was no the answer was no we never ended up getting it either and we didn't get it why well, because back then you know i was just the the little the little run, you know, I mean, if I wanted a video game, it's like, I was like five years old, they didn't really take it seriously, because probably more than likely, you know, I'd play it for a few minutes and then move on to throwing rocks at the, you know, neighborhood squirrels or something like that. You know, it would be like, when they got a video game, it was always for them. It was for my uncle, my dad, even my grandmother. So, you know, I, I, I didn't get, you know, the, my video games until I started getting a little bit older. So, you know, whenever we have this little anchor, ankle biter is sitting there asking for Pitfall, of course they're gonna be like, I'm not getting you Pitfall, what are you talking about? 
And, uh, apparently, none of the other family family members um, thought the prospect of getting Pitfall was intriguing either, because we never got the thing. We had we had a lot of games actually for that thing, and I, you know, a lot of Star and Space games. I guess that's what my uncle was into, but uh, we never got Pitfall, and and. So I don't, that's my only like actually nostalgic memory about Pitfall, which is kind of funny because it's a very popular game that a lot of people really enjoy, but I really don't have much of a connection with it other than seeing it at a Sears store one day. Uh, and that's that's it. Now, other than Toys R Us, which was the place to go to to look for video games and, and, and because this was before Funko Land and, and GameStop, obviously. Uh, it, it was Toys R Us and it was Sears. It, we were, if we wanted a game, if the family wanted a game, we would go to one of those. And that was the case pretty much through most of the 80s, if not all through the 80s. Uh, the Toys R Us aisle was long and it was, it was very, very thorough and they had a lot of stuff. But Sears, you know, Sears was no slouch either. Uh, we would go into Sears and there was always these huge, like, uh, just displays and that's the one thing I really do remember mostly about Sears especially in the NES era uh, which I remember a little bit more uh, we would go and there was there would be an NES huge NES display with uh, several screens and they would have different games set up on them and there was also like a Game Boy one uh, I don't necessarily remember the Super Nintendo maybe that's at that point we were mo mostly going to Toys R Us but I do remember those NES ones and how huge they were, and especially since you know you were smaller as a kid, and so everything looks a little bit bigger in in that perspective. Uh, but it was like this magical world, um, at least in that section. You know, Sears they had so many different things. They had clothes, they had tools, uh, they had it was like a little shopping mall. But that one little section, you know, next to the TVs and the stereos and all that good stuff was a section dedicated to video games, and that was like this magical area, uh, especially in the NES area, which I always ended up having to drag my parents to. Even though we nine times out of 10, we weren't gonna get anything, I still had to actually go and look at everything and just be surrounded by all these video games and, 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 and just take it all in. It was just such an awesome place to go. I may have actually gotten several games there, I just don't remember, but one I'm pretty sure I did get was this horrible, horrible foot football game for the, the NES, uh, man, NFL football, and it's just don't ever play that thing. But I did make the mistake of getting that at Sears, so uh, maybe I didn't have the best track record with getting video games there, but it was still an awesome place to go. Now through the 90s and to the, into the 2000s, I rarely ever went to uh, get a video game at Sears, you know. Sometimes I would go and, and buy like a, a drill or something like that, hell, maybe even if they had Black Friday shirts, really super cheap or shoes, but you know, video games, you know, there was always better places to go, uh, obviously, but there were occasional times where I would go in there and I'd find a clearance bin of a few DS games or Wii games that I would I would pick up and they were like super super cheap and that was the best time to, to go actually was when they were clearancing some of the stuff out uh, I got stuff brand new 10% of what it usually goes for some some dragon uh, Dragon Quest games on the DS I remember actually getting those there uh, but in the, the in the last few years their video games shrunk to virtually nothing it was like at least the ones that I went to in this area virtually nothing there other than just like a few of the the main titles uh, on a particular system and that was it so anyway that's my history with sears i'm not gonna miss it too terribly much if it actually ends up going away for good like i did toys r us or do toys r us uh, but it does still sadden me to a degree that that's yet another brick and mortar store that we're we're losing and i and maybe that's the old man in me maybe it's back in my day we used to get off our lazy asses we would go to the store it didn't matter if it was snowing or raining or any of that stuff we would just go and we didn't have the internet we didn't have some dude driving up at eight o'clock at night dropping a package off at our door we took our packages to the store and we got what we needed to get and then we took that drill press and we made some manly stuff with it I do kind of have that sentiment. I, I do actually, I'm worried. I'm worried that we're losing a little part of ourselves when these brick and mortar stores go away. And, and it's just, just, the void is filled by some all encompassing 
entity like 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 Skynet of, of goods and services that can be bought with a touch of a button and set to you. And, and while that is extremely convenient, and God knows I spend probably way too much money on Amazon doing that, and there are a lot of things that you can't really get anywhere else, especially if you go into the store, it's just not there. And a lot of times they're like, well, you gotta go online and get it, but I need it now. No, that's, that's definitely a thing too, but I just really hope that at some point the madness stops and, you know, these, these stores stop closing on us because I do still enjoy to this day to actually get out and about and just look at stuff on the shelf and, and just kind of browse and, and, and not, I don't know, maybe it's just because that's the mind frame I was when I was a kid, you know, uh, just going into these stores and, and seeing all the stuff that I would never get but kind of dream about getting and, and just maybe that I'm holding on to a little piece of that and convenience is better, maybe, but. No. I'll miss it if it all goes away. <laughs>